Hello, Raven. How are you today? Hi, Eva. I'm wonderful. How are you today? I am good. Thank you. Thank you for hopping on and uh, having spilling the tea with me. Um, so uh, we met. So this is Raven. You are Raven. Uh, tell me about yourself before I tell about myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Raven Wolf. Um, I am a psychic medium, so I work uh, with paranormal teams throughout the United States and go to different locations and do mediumship for them. And then I also do private sessions for families, which also include tarot, which also includes Akashic Records. It's a little bit of what you would call the kitchen sink witch <laughs> type thing. I so, a kitchen witch, so yeah, we're related. Mm -hmm. You're a kitchen sink witch, so what's the difference, though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love that. So you're a medium, like that means you connect with the other side, with people who have passed away and with spirits, right? That's correct. That is amazing. And uh, when did you find out that you had those gifts? When I actually, when I was really young, um, unfortunately, a situation happened where a classmate of mine was uh, passed away of very unfortunate circumstances. She was killed. And after she died, I started seeing the dead. And mm -hmm. I was raised in a pretty religious home. So for me to be able to see that kind of stuff was really um, not something that would be normal. <laughs> um, but as time kind of went on, I just kept seeing the dead and I figured, well, I can either do something with this to help people or I don't know what else I'm going to do. So I started learning about mediumship a little bit more and developing my skill sets. And when did that, when did that start? Like in what age? 12. Wow. That's early. Mm -hmm. Was anyone else in your family psychic? Because in my family... It wasn't. Yeah, there are other family members that I have that have those gifts. I don't think that they would see it that way, um, but they definitely do. Interesting. So um, you do mediumship. Are you a healer as well? I am. I do a lot of um, energy work with people as well, just in the context of like I do Reiki but I also do um, energy work to kind of help them process through emotions when they've lost someone as well. Um, it's I do uh, guided meditations a lot uh, with people, which is a lot of fun. Um, so those are that's kind of what I do for healing. Nice. And what kind of tarot deck do you work with? I work with a lot of different tarot decks. Um, so. Right now, I have, um, oh my goodness, about 200 decks in my collection that I've had over time. Um, <laughs> and I do use them <laughs> quite frequently. Um, but right now, um, one of my favorite decks that I'm using is a mermaid deck. And yeah. it's got like really beautiful purple lining on it. It's very shiny. Um, and it just makes me happy. It has like the siren energy already, mm -hmm. which they're actually assumed not to be that pretty, but um, we're just going to have them pretty. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. And um, how can people get a hold of you? Like, is it usually you do also online work? I mean, I do mostly online work. Yeah, I do online work. Um, if you go on to um, TikTok, you'll find me as The Desert Medium. Um, if you go on to YouTube, there's a channel that I have um, called The Desert Medium Podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're on Instagram, just look up The Desert Medium again. And sometimes it's The Desert Medium LLC, depending on where you look. So okay. that's how I can be found. That's nice. So we two actually met, um, and here's a little bit about myself. I mean, m most people that, you know, we're going to post on the platform, they know. It's me, Ava. I am a cosmic energy healer and teacher. So I instruct people as well with healing. I help them align and um, heal. 
and manifest their wishes. And I've been doing psychic tarot readings for the past 20 years, I think. So oh, it's wow. been a minute. Yeah, but um, it was a discovery journey. I didn't know I had those talents. And I wasn't as young as you were. I know I was different in an odd way, but I could never put my finger on it, what it was. So my parents shut that door down for me to come out, you know, as a spiritual psychic, because I come also from a religious family, right? And um, and I'm Greek Orthodox. And uh, yeah, it's, they've been very strict. Like my grandmother was a healer, but she was in a holistic way, a healer. She, wa she wasn't like in a you know, magical way, which uh, I'm pretty sure she knew that too. <laughs> that part <laughs> Back then in the day, you were hiding things. And um, yeah, 20 years ago, the discovery journey started. And then this is how I came to do psychic work. That's incredible. Now, do you have a specific deck that you like to work with as well? So... You said you had 200 decks, so um, I could have had maybe 100 or 50, not not that much, but like 50 decks, which in the beginning stages, when I found out it was like I was trying to do tarot card work, right? And I had always problems with, with the decks, so I used to throw them out. Like, I got mad after a while, trying, 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 you know, like not connecting with the cards. So I started with gypsy tarot cards. Oh. And they are Piatnik, the ones that I had that I really connected with, so they were Piatnik. I still have a deck at home. <clears throat> and you can always reorder them like Amazon or something. But um, those are my go-to. And then I have created my own Gypsy Tarot cards, which are called Cosmic Gypsy Tarot cards, because everything is cosmic in my life. <laughs> so I had them designed and uh, I sell them as well on my website. And then I now have just like regular tarot cards, like the you know, those ones, those, um, I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. What called, Is that the Rider Waite deck? It's a Rider Waite tarot. And then it has uh, planetary constellations. It has a little bit of a description, what it means, but it's a little different. Like it's also like has wording on top that just opens up a different way. But before I've used the Crowley tarot, you know, all kinds of Rider deck tarots, angel, angel Rider tarot, whatever. I've I've tried a lot different ones. I had like the ecclesiastic ones, like more church-like cards, which are just pretty because of the drawings. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, writer tarot cards are the ones that I also connect to. But I like the drawings. I like when they're colorful, just like you. So I like oh. them pretty. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I started that. The Gypsy Tarot cards was 20 years ago, and I was not doing readings until I became a healer, and then I got pushed into the section of doing spiritual work. So it's been interesting. So what, what started you on your path of wanting to do um, healing work and wanting to teach people how to do manifestation work? So I didn't choose that. The universe chose it for me. <laughs> I was in the entertainment industry. So my, my first profession was uh, corporate. So I was working as a legal secretary. I was working with banks and insurance. And then I always loved beauty. So I've been, you know, in as an working as a nail technician, makeup hair. And I, when I was applying makeup, I started, you know, people started receiving the first healings. I, I wasn't aware. And I became a healer because I wanted to heal. I had some issues. There was generational curses, trauma. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. And we're this one black little sheep that needs to heal everybody and everything. everything. So um, when I became a healer, this is when it started shifting. And people, when I was applying makeup, and I was good at it, right? But I was applying makeup. People fall asleep on me or they started telling me the stories and their life and I'm like okay we're all therapists like a hairdresser hairstyler hairstylist is usually a therapist right and then eventually I started just talking and predicting things and I'm like what the hell just happened and the first times you know I've never predicted like that right so the first times was a little funny because I was telling until today there's this one story from this one person a former friend of mine and I predicted to her she was sitting, I was doing her makeup and hair. And then I said, I think you're going to get divorced. And she was mad, understandable. Mm. And I didn't know how to tell her differently. And I was like, why did this even come out and up? 
And then a year later, she hit me up and she said, hey, you were right. And I was like, what happened? <laughs> this was how my first prediction come to pass. And then when I became a healer, I got pushed more into it. And then I just, you know, now I do a little bit of both. I still do the cosmetics. I have a holistic beauty line because I do love beauty. But now it has more spiritual influence into it. So it just got meshed up. And then, yeah, it's, I started, as, uh, you know, for fun doing psychic readings, not by choice. It just like I did it for me, basically, not for other people. But when we became a healer, then it got pushed into that you're going to do this for kind of like as a profession. So this is what happened. That's wonderful. So, yeah, but um, the the cosmic energy healing that I do, the cosmic energy healing that I do basically aligns you, removes anything that's negative, um, doesn't belong into your life. A lot of people with witchcraft attachments come to me. so. I don't play around like there's no good you don't negotiate with a terrorist you just remove it's just like we we're talking about it uh, when we had our first meeting uh you said that when you are on site that there's no way for you to do a healing because then all the spirits will leave so you have to protect yourself but for me it's like if I go on this side I'm gonna cleanse everything and everything is gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah I over or, you know, from it's interesting because a lot of the locations that I do go to, they do ask that the psychics not remove any of the spirits mm -hmm. that are there. And so I have to respect that. But I mean, in home situations, that's different. If they're, if I'm in a home situation where I'm with working with a specific family, then it becomes a point of where I'm removing, uh, removing anything that's causing an issue. Right. Yeah, so for me, the reason why I became a healer and the the way I manifest uh, with that all together. So for, for us as cosmic energy healers, you remove anything that's attached that doesn't belong. And usually it's an entity. So there's, again, there's no negotiation. You just remove because it's a hostile situation. And then with that, when you cleared up, you make your wishes in the healing sessions. And then I also have, for example, I have a workshop coming up now which we're doing the healing yes mm -hmm. and um what i do is i have manifestation tools for the people with you know i teach them how to journal how to use crystals if they want to do candle work uh, meditations you know anything like that any tool i have that i use personally that has helped me along the way so it's a combination of both it's healing and then manifest manifestation tools so that's how it comes about and in order for us to manifest, we have to be positive. And many times we're not positive because we have attachments. Mm -hmm. And attachments are those things that keep messing up with you. When we have like addiction issues, whether this is food or drugs or anything, those are attachments. So we have to remove those in order for us to get where we need to go. And I'm pretty sure you're aware of that as well, as you've been doing this for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's wonderful that like you actually help people through that process and through those steps to really be able to get rid of those things so that they can live a better, fuller life. I think that's incredible. Yeah, thank you. Well, I have a lot of first timers. I don't know if you have that, too. A lot of people who never had a reading before, never had a healing, they come to me first. Like I break them in or they come to me because of the energy, I suppose. Do you have that too? Do you have a lot of first timers? I do. Like um, <laughs> people will come to me because, and not really knowing exactly how the process goes because they've never seen a medium before, or they've never seen somebody who does tarot readings or Akashic records. So the first thing for me is just making sure to ease their worries, you know, let them know, Hey, you know, this is, will go at your pace everything's going to be okay it's not as scary as it yeah. looks in the movies <clears throat> like this is you know this is just a conversation we have together and then we see what we can you know we connect with the other side and we call the you know if there's a person you'd like to come forward we call that person forward and then we just we just talk we share what we receive and and I give that to you and then it's it's um it's a lot better once the first time session is over because they're like, oh, 
that's less scary than I thought it was. So yeah. <laughs> the same thing. Well, I have to tell you, you have a very pleasant being, like you're very soft with your voice and um, you have a positive energy around you. So I like that about you. So I can only imagine how people are comfortable, like I'm comfortable with you. I felt like we had a conversation before when we really barely talked. Yeah, I felt like I, you know, it's funny because the first time I met you or saw you, mm -hmm. it was like her, I was telling my, my, you know, other half, she has an amazing energy that just lights up the world. And I don't know what it is about this woman, but I definitely want to get to know her. So <laughs> you, you have this you. brilliant light around you and I just love it. Oh. <laughs> right back at you, girl, right back at you. I love that. Thank you. That, that means a lot. It's hard to find um, healers or, or readers and build a tribe. I've noticed that there's a lot of competition. It is horrific. Mm -hmm. you know besides the fake mediums and the fake psychics and the fake healers it is insane so like it's nice to find somebody that is like mind or even sees that and acknowledge that you know it's nice how long have you been actually um doing this professionally have you always just done that or no so I mean as I said I was raised in a family where they were very religious so I really couldn't do anything professionally mm -hmm. until I um I was about 18 and then started um you know going to more classes to kind of enhance my skill sets um and then um I started doing it professionally in my 20s and now I turn 40 in March <laughs> You've been doing it for a while too Mm -hmm. what about you um my first so I've been doing it since 2015 full-time so it's been like we're going on year nine now and again the universe pushed me into it I had a choice to make I was standing between two doors the one was like I'm going to work in a salon rent a chair or like work with commission doing my makeup hair and nails whatever the other one was the spiritual stuff right working in a metaphysical store I'm like, okay, what's better? What's going to make me more money? You decide, universe. I should have never should have never said that. And then, you know, the rest is history. So I've been doing healings and readings. I've been doing workshops. I've been doing group healings, you know, all those things. Ever since COVID, of course, you know, everything is online. But I work so much better when I do things online. Uh, mm -hmm. I also work well when I do, like, group settings, as in group healing or a workshop. But um, professionally for the, you know, full time, pretty much since 2015. So we're going on year nine. And before that, I was just, you know, doing, like I said, corporate work. And then I did a lot of beauty stuff. So that was a long time. But I also in between and with that, I in 2014, I started my uh, beauty brand. And now it's becoming it became a holistic beauty brand. And now I'm <clears throat> finally at the point when I was telling people I want to include the spirituality with the beauty. They were just looking at me like I was an alien from another planet. And now everybody does it. And I'm like, really? Really? Right. Well, I mean, I it's all interconnected. Right. Yeah. So that's that's uh, my story. But um, we met through teaching both of us mm -hmm. and um we did have both classes where um and this is the one thing that i'm interested in talking about shadow work because shadow work is such a broad subject and people don't always understand what that means so what if you would like to enlighten us what is your take on shadow work like it's incredibly important to do shadow work. And the reason why I say it's important to do shadow work is because it means that we're facing some of the things sometimes that are not easy to work through. Mm -hmm. And it can be challenges that are put in our way so that we can learn and grow. And when we continuously make the choice to ignore our shadows and understand them then it becomes it becomes difficult because then some of the things that we could be accomplishing in our lives we're holding ourselves back from because we're choosing not to face some of the things that are not so nice and not so good but when we can face those things and admit 
to ourselves. These are, you know, certain patterns that I'm, that I'm following. These are um, specific topics that I need to break through on. Um, or we start taking classes to help improve our own growth um, and understand that a little bit more. Um, it really does help because not only are we releasing that challenge to where we can just flow through it we're also looking at you've talked about generational curses and traumas and that kind of thing and when i think about shadow work i think about that as being a spiritual release for those things in the past and i believe that if people choose to you know reincarnate in the future or if you know they choose different paths at least they won't have that carrying with them as they go into the next transition that they choose to go into. Um, so I think it's, it's extremely imperative that we, that we all continue to work on that. It doesn't mean we're perfect and it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we don't, um, that we don't have, um, that we can't help people. It just means that it's a lifetime thing. It's something you continue to work work on through your lifetime. And there are a lot of journals and books out there that can help with that. But uh, that's my viewpoint on it. What, what about you? What are your thoughts? <laughs> so for those who don't know, maybe we should um, point it out. For those who don't know what or understand what shadow work is, it's usually healing your inner damages, your generational damages or curses and your attachments. That's shadow work. Shadow work can be fixed with healing with meditation through crystal work you can also use fire which is candle work but usually it's pure healing or akashic record readings and healings so for those who don't know because when i started tapping into everything um i didn't understand I, I read what shadow work is i did not understand because people fancied it so much and they made it such a big word that it wasn't it's basically you heal everything that is attached to you within you and it needs to be aligned and they sold it as a luxury item which you know it's luxury if you heal but um seeing now what i'm seeing and working what i work with and through shadow work is basically healing it's healing your inner child which that's my class and um shadow work is releasing attachments especially karmic ones so you described it very well and for me shadow work is in the cosmic energy healing because we align all the chakras and we have of course more than seven chakras we have at least 200 chakras which we're just not aware of of the names you know you have to research them but um for me shadow work is so important it has transformed my life in to being a healthier and happier version of me to fill on my full self it's almost like you take away the mask you take away all these attachments and layers i always say it's you're peeling the onion every time you do a healing you're peeling the onion and then new stuff comes up that you need to work through right that's the fun part not <laughs> Yeah, and, and it, it's it's a lifetime. I think it's a lifetime process too. It like is. It's not just something, and that's something I've been learning as I've been doing my shadow work. Is once you do one layer, something new comes up, and you're like, "Well, I thought yeah. I took care of that, but apparently not." So yeah. So shadow work, when you work through your obstacles, and you do it the right way, then abundance comes in, and that's so people don't understand. I it took me a long time so I'm just going to tell you the way it was when I was not a healer and then when I became a healer right so as a non-healed person I always thought I have to fix my love life which was a mess and my money and that's most people have this everybody comes with the same thing it's money and love so instead of me healing and aligning right and doing a healing or road opening and shadow work and healing reiki whatever it was right um I was like no no I'm going to fix it differently so with that, you just top on the layers. You just add to the layers of problems that you have. But once I learned how to heal and just take away the layers and uh, become the better version of myself, all of a sudden, everything, when you align, everything around you aligns. 
when you take away those curses and you help yourself and your family members, because we also have, you know, issues and attachments with them. And when you detangle that, then all of a sudden you have better communication. You have a better outlook towards like how people treat you, how people see you. Sometimes people don't see you. You have shadows over you. You have attachments and they don't see you in the light that was supposed they are supposed to see you. So this is what ha it has done to me. This is what it has done to my clients. Uh, I'm sure you have success stories. I mean, I had this I had so many testimonies. Yeah. So that yeah, I've had some pretty. Um, I'm very grateful because I've had clients really have major breakthroughs um, that honestly were completely spirit led. Like the the fact that we were able to break through what we were able to break through amazing and to see the relief and see them improving in their lives is there's nothing that could ever I could ever put a price tag on that for I mean yeah I can actually put a price tag because I know one of my clients she went from she did she did the work though she was like religiously taking the healings usually my healing sessions are like 10 in a row and you do twice a week or once a week so once you do that you take a break then you start again and she done she's done the work like she done a few cycles she went from 100,000 to 500,000 oh wow mm -hmm. Then then she was still complaining because love was not there and I'm like listen girl we do one thing at a time right and, and <laughs> but it worked so and then I had people who through the healing they got married had kids or they moved and they changed the job careers and but um one thing that um I've noticed as a healer and a seer I see sometimes the attachments now I cannot even imagine what it's like for you Let's just say that I am consistently needing to make sure to protect myself and clear myself yeah. when I'm going to different locations and I'm working with person to person in front of me, um, whether it's online or out in the world, I'm always having to go through an entire process. And like, okay, so I'm super curious when you go, do when you see the spirits, right? You see the spirits, how what they look like. Like, describe some that don't look human like. Oh boy. So okay. Curious. So there was a um there was a prison that I was invited to that was not a working prison. The working prison was adjacent to it, but I was invited to it uh, to do a paranormal investigation because they're good friends of mine um and uh the, it's nevada state paranormal and susan bernard runs though runs it um but i got invited to go out there and um they had this cafeteria area <laughs> and you see all the different spirits and some of them are nice and some of them are definitely not i mean it's a prison and in one particular area of the prison there was this creature with multiple arms and legs that crawled out and its head looked at me and it was like it just wasn't human it had um multiple eyes and it was just one of those things where I was like oh no 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 we need to go ahead and take this and go to a diff go in a different direction and not have people over here so yeah that was not fun. So you saw it, but did it try to come to you or attack you or anything? And did uh, it did. It did actually try to latch on to me. Um, and because I've been working, had been working consistently on my protection, like, and what that is for me, it depends on the location that I'm going to. So if a specific, I will do divination before I go to a place and say, do I need my oils? Do I need my crystals? Do I need to put a bubble of protection around myself? Is this place safe enough for me to enter into? Is it good for my soul to enter into this space? Can I um, protect myself and the surroundings and the people that are going into this location with me? Now, just to be clear, Nevada State Prison has a lot of really amazing spirits as well that are interesting. But this one is just particularly creepy. This one was particularly creepy. <laughs> Um, and it did try to take two of its arms and latch down on my shoulders. And I was like, nope. And I 
ran the other direction and I just kind of worked, took a moment and took some deep breaths and amplified my protection. And I didn't have to worry about that thing following me. But for the most part, a lot of the spirits that are there now, um, they're not that, they're not like that, but this thing was not human. It's a terrorist. That's what I would not negotiate. I would remove it. Did you remove it? Did I remove it? Um, I did not feel that I had the um, correct tools to remove that specific being because it was outside of my sphere of knowledge. And I did not want to create more problems by removing something I had no understanding of beyond what I was seeing. I think, I think uh, speaking of attachments, because that's also with shutter work, um, I included um i had this one friend and she was a muslim she was turkish and that was back then in europe um in germany when i used to still live there and she had a gin i don't know if you experienced anything with the gin but girl i i don't have words so in the beginning when i met her um she she was a coffee cup reader like uh turkish coffee grinds you know that's also a way of fortune telling i do that too greek Greek, Turkish, whatever coffee, Arabic coffee, uh, people do that as, as, as a way of uh, divination of reading the cup and predicting the future. So that's how I met her. And then uh, we became friends. And then she told me one day, right, like a few months in, she's like, I have a gin. And I'm like, what do you mean? What gin? Like the gin, like in the movies, like Aladdin or something. And she's like, kind of, but I'm kind of married to the gin. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah. And she said, he takes over me and it's hard for me to move on in life. So that was the Mm. first case. I was not a healer back in the day. And she was the one that opened me to, gave me the news, basically booked me in and said, you are psychic. You need to work on that. And that's your journey. You have to take alone. So back then I wasn't a healer. So um, in the beginning, I used to not feel anything. I used to see that she was like different sometimes. I couldn't tell what it was. But it was the gin or the attachment that she had uh, that was lashing on to her. So one time later, like maybe a year later or like a few months later, we hang out and I was sitting in the living room and then I feel like funny. I'm like, there's something and I see something walking. And back then I did not comprehend anything of ghosts like that because in Germany, the time was not so spiritual. Like people were not open to that stuff. So I'm like, I just, I think I just saw something walking and she's like, yeah, that's the gin. And I'm like, what? So that was the first regard. And then he got used to me. So he started showing himself. I used to feel his presence. And then one time I said, I need to feel that gin. And I was playing chess or something with a friend and the gin came over me and I fainted. That's how strong the energy was. And ever since I've never asked again for any contact with the gin. And like, I stayed away, like asking those questions. And um, I don't know, have you seen a gin? Like it, it, it was insane. It was surreal. I cannot believe that I fainted. Like I did not understand what I was. Th- the energy was so heavy. I I have heard of the gin. I am doing research on it. However, I have not come across um I don't feel that I have enough knowledge to be able to state, yes, I've met a gin. Um, but I have done a lot of research on it and I've seen one thing spiritually um, that I believe may have some kind of connection to it. But without having the research behind me, I don't want to say that I know. For me, the only reason why I know is because she told me. And then she told me also she's married to the gin and they have babies in the whatever world dimension they are. Mm-hmm. She could not get rid of him and she had problems in relationships. Now seeing back, right, as a healer at this point, no problem removing this entity because it's an entity and that's a terrorist. And again, I don't negotiate with terrorists. So for me, it's like I will remove that. But the energy back then that I felt, it was really heavy. No I have I I have heard of um otherworldly beings preventing people from having successful relationships i've heard of that multiple different times i've seen stories about that so i know that that's very 
and I've I've seen it with one or two people, but not in regards to gin. So I know it's real. So what kind of entities were those? Um, one of them was a go was a person who had passed on in the 1800s and had found this young woman that reminded him of his wife. Gotcha. And he decided that he wanted to pursue her um, in the dream world. And uh, she would wake up um, from having dreams of him. And she got married to him in the spirit world. And, um, and so she stayed with him for a very, very long time. And then told, uh, told me later on, that she decided she wanted a divorce from him. So in that um, state, she went through a divorce in the spiritual realm, but his energy was kind of still sticking around um, because he didn't really want to give up on her. And so she went through a cleansing process and um, we were able to open a door to send him on his way. And he left, and then about two years later, she ended up finding a boyfriend, and everything was fine, and she ended up getting married. So it was all good. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Th those are stories, if you tell a person that does not do psychic work or healing work or has no knowledge of spirituality, and they're just curious, they just look at you and they think like you're crazy. But speak right. to somebody who is a colleague, um, and then sharing the experiences is like so much nicer or so it's it's not about being it's nicer like it's nice to have an understanding that people know that you're not crazy because it's already hard to explain even though now the veil is so thin that uh spirits coming through and aliens and every creature there is but as a as a healer as a as a shadow worker light worker whatever you want to call it it's just, those stories are just like one of a kind and they need to be told so people understand that this is real i had a situation in my own family that i haven't been very open about um but i had a family member who was taken over by things that would come through like entities and things that were not of the highest good and it was a very difficult situation but I was taught by another um, practitioner how to remove those things and so I was able to set up a little bit more of a protective barrier around myself because this person was extremely close to me and my own like immediate family mm -hmm. um and so unfortunately i've had a lot of crossings with these different ones um but thankfully they don't bother me so much anymore <laughs> and you healed that person like you removed those attachments i you know no I'm going to say no. And the reason why is the person wasn't willing to let go of those specific attachments. And um, because of the way they make him f or her feel. Yes. And so I, instead of doing that, I've more so separated myself from that. Um, and I'm very, very cautious when I'm around that specific person. But I, I do have quite a bit of experience of dealing with different things coming through one particular person without them having um, any issues with mental stability. This person's actually very, you know, mentally stable. Um, but when these things came through, sometimes they were quite. Dominating. Yes. And they could, they could be scary at times. So um, it just took learning that I needed to be in control of the situation and not allow that those specific beings to affect me in the way that they were trying to affect me and learning how to, you know, use my protective barriers a little bit more um, that kind of helped me with the situation. I would like to say that that person is specifically free of it, but I don't think that they want to be. The 
I energetically, and this is just like as a psychic, because you know, the minute you we, we talk about things, I feel like a certain power the person gains and a certain feeling that they make him feel, and that's how they allure him. So it's a trap. I would recommend for you to do a cord cutting if you haven't done it already. Oh, I have. <laughs> so like another one, another one, because there's the full moon on Thursday. Okay. And yeah. So I would say do another cord cutting for your own sakes. Um, I always do a lot of healing, reversal, protection towards the full moon. You can also do like, you know, money and love matters, but usually it's more for the healing aspect. It's not for you necessarily, to, in my eyes, to plant. But in the same time, if you're powerful, you can do anything you want at any time. So when people ask me, especially in beginning stages, I that's what I teach them. But I also say, if you're powerful, you know, then it's different. But I think you're safe. It's just you being around that person. This is, and I think anyone around that person has this issue. So that's, that's too bad. But, you know, they, there's a lot of people that love these attachments. These demons or the, the shadows or whatever it is. And you see that also a lot in the entertainment industry. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. But, yeah, some people are not ready to go let go. So many, I have you had this too? Like, I mean, you just actually... Uh, answered it i had people coming in wanting to have a healing but then they didn't want to let go of certain attachments i mean yeah. you you tell them like if you're ready then things will you know leave and if you're not ready then you will continue to have the attachments has happened many times to me like not so it's ha it's happened quite a bit actually it's interesting mm -hmm. because sometimes they'll want to come in and like do specific work say that they want to do specific work to help clear out old um things like for example within the akashic records for example and then they don't want to do the work and then it doesn't work and they're surprised that it doesn't work but if you do the work yes. it works <laughs> funny how they think like it's a magic trick that's in the movies it's not real time in real time you need to put the effort in right mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you teach, do you teach people how to do, how to read Akashic records or what do you teach people? What is your expertise? Because I've seen that you do like meditation, healing and protection workshop. Is that, is that the main thing you do? Is the other things you do? Oh, I do. I do quite a bit. I mean, I do healing protection and reversal um, stuff right now, but I also do, um, akashic records quite a bit so with that um it's dependent on whether they just want akashic records reading to where like you just pull in from the records to go ahead and give them a reading about a specific lifetime that they had or if they want to be able to experience it themselves then we'd go in with, through a meditation and we go through the steps so that they can actually get the answers that they're looking for and then we go in and release whatever is holding them to that past life because sometimes when we go into a new life when we haven't worked through some of that stuff there are those cords or old energies that are stuck there so I help people with that and with mediumship um, I primarily just do mediumship readings so I connect with those who have crossed over and then I help people with compassionate communications and try to help them through their healing process. So those are the kinds of workshops and focuses I have. Um, right now, I'm more focused on, um, I'm more focused on, you know, starting to work with the mediumship stuff and teaching people how to do that as well. Um, Very nice. But yeah, what about you? Thank you. So before I go into me, uh, I want to know when is your next class? How uh, I'm going to be linking um, your uh, link tree or your social so people can get a hold of you because I sure. think you're amazing. And um, 
I want to know, like, when is your next workshop, your personal workshop or a class? Personal workshop. The next one is February 29th. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I'm here. <laughs> yeah. You made it special. <laughs> yeah. So February 29th is the next one that we're going to be doing. Um, and if you join the Desert Medium LLC group, then you'll get all the details on that, but we'll be working um, because it's the month of love. We'll be doing stuff on love and nice. um, it'll be fun. I think I'm going to take that class. Maybe that's <laughs> something I can learn too. So um, <laughs> is, uh, is that a Facebook group or what group? Where do we yeah, it's a, it's a Facebook group. So if you look up the desert medium LLC, it's a private group. Um, and in that group, it has monthly classes that I do. Um, and then I also do readings there. And sometimes um, every once in a while, I'll go live and pull cards for people. But the primary focus is like the workshops and the classes that I'm providing. Nice. Very nice. Awesome. So my next thing that's coming up. So I am teaching classes. It just happened over the last year so. I am teaching classes to how to protect yourself, healing, protection, reversal. That's like a little bit more advanced reversal. I haven't tapped into because I have a lot of newbies. So healing and protection, love, manifestation, money, manifestation, road opening. Um, I will teach Feng Shui next month. I have a cosmic club, which is just like a group of yours, but I'm not on Facebook. I have my regular uh, Facebook uh, cosmic energy life um on all socials and um in the cosmic club i do monthly tarot readings and uh, then i do classes and people can watch it on demand if they cannot catch it and then i used to do like small videos of you know how to do certain things like how do you make an oil what does this crystal mean whatnot so i have a library of about like 100 videos and every month we exchange you know the class so we just had tea magic tea ceremony and what tea means in magical ways and what it means in holistic ways because over the last three four years i've been also tapping a lot into holistic healing which is also for us as whether we're psychic or um healers that's also very important we usually step into that realm as well to do a lot of holistic herb remedies because if you know what it means to prepare a spell or a manifestation then you eventually will find out what you know this uh, herb means in holistic matters and healing and um, I do smaller classes like that and I now have a workshop that's going to go for five weeks and it's called inner child healing where it's a lot about healing your inner self aligning your chakras this is what I always do and it's the shadow work that we put in and um, we're going to also do manifestation techniques where I will monitor over the five weeks the you know the journaling and how to write it out the right way and you know and uh what tools to use with crystals or candles or what colors what days what times to manifest and how to manifest and uh it's gonna be on repeat so it's gonna be five weeks long this is my first bigger workshop i'm very excited about it and um yeah, I'm I'm excited to teach people how and what and when and where. And some of the people that come, they have done this already, just like in single person, as a single person, single sessions. And now I'm offering this as a group because it's so much more powerful and I do want to grow. So I'm excited about that. And that's why it's nice to see that you're also doing the workshops with mentorship. Like that is amazing. That is one skill that... And everybody's psychic, like people forget, like we are intuitive. It's just a question, how much have you been awakened yet? Because we do function with intuition. So I'm excited for you with a men mentor. You should also make it like a workshop, maybe. I thought about, um, I am thinking about putting a mediumship in the paranormal workshop. So I'm looking at maybe creating a three to four week um, workshop on it. Um, for people who are already in mediumship that are interested in the paranormal because when I first started I was just a medium I didn't become a medium in the paranormal till I was in my 30s so well the big like about 10 years ago so <laughs> um 
but I've been doing mediumship since I was really young. So I kind of want to go over some of the things as a medium um, that people can do can do to help other people when going into places and being able to recognize uh, certain things and then knowing when to reach out to other sources mm-hmm. um, to get the help that they need. Because for example, that, that, um, that parasitic energy that I was telling you about that was in the prison that I went to. Um, there are other people that I'm thankfully connected with that know how to handle different things. So if I needed somebody to go in to remove something and I don't know how to remove it, I know people who can, like you or other people. That's amazing. It's amazing how there are so many different, you know, light workers and ghost hunters and paranormal mediums and for me the one thing that has opened up more is also like holistic holistic like i'm i'm not a medical medium but i'm i'm going that route kind of i've predicted many many times sickness illness sadly and then i many many times have a cure for it whether people do it or not is a different story but um that's has that has been opening for me too the last five years maybe started opening up so it's interesting how you started as a medium and now you're going like to the paranormal side and this is so like this is so interesting for me and then you know I started with like oh I'm gonna pull a tarot card and now it's like I channel messages I've been channeling messages for a long time I just don't always tell people (laughs) because you know you people see you and then they start asking you psychic questions like I'm not a machine that's not how it works. So sometimes you just need to sit down and have your space and everything be also, you know, prepared and receive the messages. And it's just like, and now I'm going into, you know, medical stuff and I'm just like, ah, how? But it's just channeling, you know, the messages. So it's nice to teach other people that I'm not there yet, but like, I, I, I rather focus on the healing part and you know helping people manifest because that seems to be very important right now but as in single sessions then you know I can definitely help with that but I feel like it's so important to have a good teacher for mediumship because there are there is need and there are people who don't teach the right thing so I feel that's amazing especially with your knowledge you have so much knowledge you do too I (laughs) thank you I'm so lucky to have met someone like you because it's nice to have someone who does things um a little bit differently than for me because then I can you know refer people when I need somebody who I know knows what they're doing I can refer them to you or to people that I know because we're not all going to necessarily focus on the same exact gifts or same ways of doing things yeah that's the beauty of it but vice versa I would send people to you I have I have this one or other client that keeps asking about ghosts and I'm like I don't do that I don't want to tap into that I will remove them and and, you know they're like no and I'm like I don't know find somebody else now I can send them to you (laughs) happy to help in any way I can (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely that's amazing so like do you do you have anything upcoming like is there anything coming for you in terms of like you going to a location for like ghost hunting is something coming up yeah, there's something huge, but unfortunately, I can't disclose that information okay. at this point. That's completely fine, but that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> well, this was fun. Like, I hope we can do this again and uh, talk about something else. But I feel like shadow work. And of course, uh, we're getting to know each other and asking each other, uh, you know, our specialties and it's um, not just only advertising, but it's also acknowledging people, what we do, what we're specialized in. But it's really nice to talk with people about shadow work and healing, what the process is. And I hope that with this um, episode that we um, just randomly picked up, <laughs> <laughs> that we are able to knowledge people and just get the curiosity going. Because a lot of people are actually scared of what shadow work means. And it's really nothing besides healing technically and this I just, agree it's just different ways so oh and how do people find you um oh so that 
that's important. <laughs> How do people find you so that think, they can come to your workshops? You. You're so sweet. So uh, I mentioned earlier, CosmicEnergyLife.com is my website. You can book me there. Um, you can find me on Instagram with Cosmic Energy Life and Facebook as well. Uh, also on TikTok with Cosmic Energy Life. I think Twitter is Cosmic Energy now because I couldn't make the word longer. They're like cutting the words. So yeah, Cosmic Energy Life. Um, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Everywhere there. I'm like on five platforms. I, I, I stopped adding platforms. I'm not on Snapchat. I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot but you're on youtube facebook tiktok and instagram yes okay that's that's enough i twitter is a hidden miss i just had it for so long i'm just like used to it by now but i i thought about keeping twitter um but i'm just not on there enough to be able to say that i would respond there so it's better to go to the others <laughs> It's a hit and miss. It's just, I'm used to it by now. When I post, I post everywhere. But, like, I don't search anything on Twitter. It's rare. Like, unless I see somebody posting something, I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to go to Twitter. It's rare. It's it's not a bad platform. It's just, it's just like Snapchat is very specific. Even though they're making everything the same now. But, yeah. Um, I tried TikTok Lives, but that was not my jam, so... I just create little videos and um, yeah, it, they're becoming all the same platform. So everywhere you go, you're going to see the same thing. Like, I, I think you do the same thing. You post everywhere on the same platform. So yeah. Yeah. I hope we can. Um, I definitely will put this up on a podcast in audio form and you can follow me on Cosmic Energy Life anywhere on Spotify or Apple. So your information will be reached as well. And you're going to put it on your YouTube channel and I'm on mine. So we can snip and share. And yeah, on all socials. Sounds Thank you so good. much. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope we can do this again. Um, I, we will definitely, yeah, we will definitely be in touch. And uh, thank you for being my guest. No problem. Thanks for having me.